Despite my primary focus on Marvel Comics, my picks for the best comics of all time is littered with DC Comics. As a matter of fact, I have 8 Marvel picks inside the 50 best comics of all time, but 10 DC books and more if we're counting Vertigo. So let's celebrate the long history of Detective Comics with a look at the 15 highest rated DC Comics in Comic Book Herald's best comics of all time. I highly recommend giving all these a read and then letting me know your favorites in the video comments. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. Com. You can find links in the show notes for the published CBH best comics of all time, as well as the list of the 15 best DC comics of all time that I'll be listing here. Let's dive straight in, in descending order, and oh hey, by the way, if you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel, please consider liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. All that stuff helps me out a great deal. Number 15, and number 156 on the best comics of all time, Jack Kirby's Fourth World Saga. The Fourth World is a concept created by legendary comic book artist and writer Jack Kirby, published across four titles, New Gods, Mr. Miracle, The Forever People, and Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, from 1970 to 1973. The Fourth World is a cosmic epic that explores the conflict between the godlike new gods of New Genesis and the evil forces of Apocalypse, led by the tyrannical dark side. The series introduces a brand new cast of, well, gods, including Orion, Light Ray, High Father, Big Barda, Desaad, Granny Goodness, and so many others. Kirby's 70s work leans heavily into mythology and the foundations of humanity, and for me, he never got better than his first post-Marvel foray into crafting the fourth world. Number 14 on the list, and number 96 on the best comics of all time, JLA by Grant Morrison and Howard Porter. Justice League of America, written by Grant Morrison and illustrated by Howard Porter, was published from 1997 to 2000. The series is a modern retelling of the classic JLA, featuring a roster of iconic DC heroes, including Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Aquaman, and Martian Manhunter, but then bringing in some fun, unexpected cast members like Plastic Man, or Catwoman, or Huntress. The series is known for its bold, epic storytelling and its innovative use of the Justice League as a vehicle for exploring themes of heroism, unity, and the nature of good and evil. Mostly, though, Morrison and Porter are responsible for making the Justice League cool again, recentering the franchise as the core of the biggest possible DC Universe superhero stories. This is by far my favorite Justice League run of all time, with iconic arcs like World War III, Rock of Ages, and the Injustice Society. You can practically get to a top 15 DC stories just using Morrison's contributions, but for me, this is one of their finest blends of bold new ideas and user-friendly pop sci-fi. Number 13 on the list, and number 87 on the best comics, Superman Smashes the Clan. Superman Smashes the Clan by Gene Luen Yang and Guri Hero was released in late 2020 and early 2021, but adapts a 1940s radio serial. The graphic novel is a modern retelling of a classic 1946 episode of the Superman radio show, which was one of the first depictions of the Man of Steel taking on the Ku Klux Klan. The graphic novel is also set in the 1940s and focuses on the Lee family, who have just moved from Chinatown to Metropolis. The family soon becomes the target of the local clan chapter, which is determined to drive them out of town. However, they find an ally in Superman, who uses his powers to protect the Lees and bring the clan to justice. The graphic novel is a powerful story about standing up against hate and prejudice, and it's told in a way that is accessible and engaging for young readers and longtime fans alike, a truly, truly difficult feat. Yang is one of the best modern creators in my view, and this is his finest work in the DC Comics canon. Number 12 and number 79 on the best comics list, Hitman. Hitman by Garth Ennis and illustrated by John McRae, which was published from 1996 to 2001, follows the adventures of Tommy Monahan, a hitman from the seedy neighborhoods of Gotham City who gains superpowers through a series of freak events. Coming out in tandem with Ennis and Steve Dillon's Preacher, Hitman is known for its dark humor and brutal violence, as well as its exploration of the criminal underworld and the morality of vigilantism. McRae's artwork is known for its rough, rough-and-tumble style that perfectly captures the grit and grime of Gotham City, and Ennis's writing here scales back on the shock-jock values of the boys, or even Preacher, while retaining enough bite to stand out as a particularly fresh new lens on the DCU. Number 11 and number 73 on the all-time list, The Legion of Superheroes, The Great Darkness Saga. The Great Darkness Saga is one of only two pre-crisis on Infinite Earths DC stories I have inside my top 15, which yes, speaks to my recency bias, I am so young and hip, but also highlights how good I think The Great Darkness Saga is. The epic cosmic saga was written by Paul Levitz and illustrated by Keith Giffen, and is the easiest Legion of Superhero Stories um, story to recommend to a new reader. 
The Legion of Superheroes is a team of teenage superheroes from the 31st century who work together to protect the future. In the Great Darkness Saga, the Legion faces its greatest challenge yet as they battle against a mysterious yet familiar evil presence. And frankly, I won't even speak the name aloud lest I spoil the mild surprise. Number 10 on the best DC comics and number 53 on the all-time list, Batman the New 52. Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's 52 issues from 2011 to 2016 are the highlight of DC's New 52, introducing new lasting creations to the Batman mythos, such as the Court of Owls and Batman Zero Year, which heavily influenced the Batman by director Matt Reeves starring Robin Pattinson. Again, despite the fact that it's a long ongoing run of comics, the status as a launch book in the New 52 makes it much more accessible than your average superhero comic book. In the grand tradition of Batman, there are, of course, some big, memorable Joker stories, but one of the things I like most about Snyder and Capullo is how much fun they're willing to have with outside-the-box approaches to the title, including Jim Gordon's era wearing an Iron Man-esque Batsuit to protect Gotham during Bruce's apparent absence. If you only ever read one series from the New 52, it should be this. Number 9, and number 51 on the all-time list, Saga of the Swamp Thing. Alan Moore, Stephen Bissett, and John Tuttleman's 1980s reinvention of Swamp Thing is the proto-Vertigo DC work, all built around a humanoid plant elemental creature who was once a scientist named Alec Holland. Swamp Thing blends elements of horror, science fiction, and fantasy, and integrates the maturation and meticulous care that Alan Moore brought to all his 80s superhero work. Throughout the series, Swamp Thing struggles to come to terms with his new form and to find meaning in his existence, offering some surprising cosmic and philosophical angles not readily explored in the superhero genre at the time. You can make a strong case this is actually the most influential work on this list and has essentially set the standard for any creator seeking their full potential on a revelatory, critically acclaimed masterpiece. Number 8 on the list, and number 37 on the all-time list, Batman, The Long Halloween, and Dark Victory. Long Halloween and Dark Victory are two comic book limited series written by Jeff Loeb and illustrated by Tim Sale, published by DC Comics in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Like year one, both series are set in the early days of Batman's career, during a time when he is still relatively new to the role of the Cape Crusader. Long Halloween follows Batman as he tries to solve a series of murders that take place on holidays. Loeb and Sale really lean into utilizing all the most familiar supporting players in Gotham, including Jim Gordon, Catwoman, and Two-Face, while centralizing Calendar Man as a Hannibal Lecter-esque figure and the crime families of Gotham as players outside the supervillain sphere. The villain of the issue approach allows Sale a chance to characterize and design Batman's full rogues gallery, which is a true joy to see. Dark Victory is the sequel and continues the story of the holiday murders and introduces new villains to the mix, including the Hangman. While it's not as strong as the original, Dark Victory does lay a ton of the groundwork for the fall of Harvey Dent, much of which inspires the version of the character in Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight. Number 7, and number 32 on the all-time list, Batman Gear 1. A four-issue limited series written by Frank Miller and illustrated by David Mazzucchelli, published by DC Comics in 1987. The series is a post-Crisis on Infinite Earths retelling of the origin story of Batman, detailing his first year as the Cape Crusader and his early battles against the criminal underworld of Gotham City. Year One is set in a time when Bruce Wayne has just returned to Gotham after several years of training abroad and begins his crime-fighting career as the mysterious figure known as the Batman. He quickly attracts the attention of the city's corrupt police force and becomes the target of both the city's criminals and its politicians. At the same time, Jim Gordon, a rookie police officer, is transferred to Gotham and begins to see the city's corruption firsthand. Many DC fans can make a case for this as Miller's best bat work, and with David Mazzucchelli penciling the work, it's a very compelling case. Year One became the template for retold origins of familiar characters and remains a must-read for fans of Batman or, frankly, the superhero genre in general. Number 6 on the best DC comics and number 30 on the all-time list, Gotham Central. Starting in 2003, written by Ed Brubaker and Greg Rucka with artwork by Michael Lark, the series takes place in the Gotham City Police Department and focuses on the lives of the detectives who work there, including Jim Gordon, Renee Montoya, and Harvey Bullock, as they attempt to maintain order in the city while dealing with the threats posed by its numerous Batman-obsessed villains, including a brutal Mr. Freeze and one of the best Joker stories ever in Soft Targets. The series is notable for its unique approach to the Batman universe, as it focuses on the police officers and detectives who do work in the shadows of the Dark Knight. It's up there with Kurt Busiak and Alex Ross's Marvels for the best approach to a non-caped view of a superhero city and universe, and Brubaker, Rucka, and Lark are perfectly suited to make this 40-plus must-read issues. Number 5, top 5 best DC comics of all time, and number 23 on the all-time list, All-Star Superman. 
All-Star Superman is a 12-issue limited series written by Grant Morrison and illustrated by Frank Quitely, published by DC Comics from 2005 to 2008. The series is widely regarded as one of the best Superman stories ever told and is a must-read for fans of The Man of Steel. The series takes a new approach to the character of Superman, exploring his motivations, relationships, and his place in the world as the most powerful being on the planet. The story begins with Superman being exposed to a lethal dose of solar radiation, giving him only a year to live. He decides to use his remaining time to make a positive impact on the world, but also to put his affairs in order, and of course dealing with his arch nemesis Lex Luthor. I do think Morrison's multi-layered use of continuity and reference points make virtually all of their work better when you have a certain familiarity with the character's history. But All-Star Superman is about as accessible as Morrison gets in their wonderful DC Universe tapestry. Number four on the list and number 22 on the best comics of all time, Starman. Starman by James Robison and primarily Tony Harris is one of the DC's finest long ongoing runs, originally starting in 1994. The series is a reinterpretation of the original Starman character first introduced in the 1940s and leans into that legacy and familial history to fantastic effect. The series follows Jack Knight, the son of the original Starman, as he takes up the mantle of the superhero and becomes a new Starman for a new generation. Jack is a more reluctant hero, and the series explores his struggles to balance his responsibilities as a superhero with his desire for a normal life, and also gets to blend in a whole lot of the Justice Society of America and that fabled golden age of 1940s superheroes. Harris's art is especially noteworthy with its detailed and expressive character designs and use of innovative panel layouts and page designs. Starman is a unique love letter to the history of comic books, and it pays homage to the characters and stories that have come before, while also creating something new and innovative. Number three, best DC comics of all time, and number nine on my all-time list, Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Dark Knight Returns is a four-issue limited series written and illustrated by Frank Miller, originally published by DC Comics in 1986. It is widely considered to be one of the greatest Batman stories ever told, and is often credited with revitalizing the character for a new generation of readers. The story takes place in a dystopian version of Gotham City ten years after the retirement of Bruce Wayne as Batman. With crime running rampant and the city in chaos, Bruce is compelled to return to the mantle of the Dark Knight and clean up the streets once again. Along the way, he faces off against some of his most iconic foes, including the Joker, Two-Face, and raving mutant gangs. Miller explores the physical and psychological toll that years of crime fighting have taken on an aged Bruce and the impact it has had on his relationships and personal life, while also developing a new Robin. The dark, brooding atmosphere, its thought-provoking political commentary, and its intricate and action-packed plot make The Dark Knight one of the most influential and well-known graphic novels of all time. Miller's art is iconic with its heavy inks and dramatic panel layouts, and it has had a lasting impact on the look and feel of Batman stories for years to come. Number two, my favorite DC Comics of all time, and number seven on the best comics of all time list, Mr. Miracle. Mr. Miracle by Tom King and Mitch Gerards is a 12-issue limited series originally starting in 2017. It's a modern reimagining of the classic Jack Kirby character following Scott Free, also known as Mr. Miracle, as he tries to navigate his dual identities as the greatest escape artist in the world and the son of the new god's leader, Darkseid. The story explores themes of trauma, mental health, and existentialism as Scott is faced with the ultimate escape, death, and must find a way to escape his own personal demons. For my money, this is the peak of Tom King's best period in a sequence of releases including Omega Men, Sheriff of Babylon, and Vision. King and Gerard's achieve incredible symbiosis, exploring the emotional depth and psychological complexity of Scott and Barda's relationship. I find tremendous connection in the parental and marital components of Scott's struggle, but what's remarkable about Mr. Miracle is how it presents variant interpretations depending on the reader's own background and challenges. It's a modern classic and my second favorite DC comic of all time. Number one, my favorite DC comic of all time, and number six on the best comics of all time list, Doom Patrol by Grant Morrison and Richard Case. Doom Patrol originally started in 1989 by Morrison and Case. The series is a reimagining of the original Doom Patrol team, first introduced in the 1960s, and is widely regarded the greatest run in the history of the title. This is where Robot Man, Crazy Jane, Negative Man, and the mysterious and charismatic Chief really come into their own as an unlikely group of heroes fighting against strange and otherworldly threats. And when I say strange, we're talking real 
real weird. <laughs> Morrison's writing is characterized by its use of surreal imagery, nonlinear storytelling, and a deep exploration of the character's psychology and motivations. Richard Case's artwork is equally notable with its detailed and imaginative depictions of the characters and the seriously strange and unusual worlds they inhabit. Doom Patrol is notable for its deconstruction of traditional superhero comics, challenging the conventions and tropes of the genre. This is very much a forerunner to what Vertigo comics would become, but all technically happening inside DC continuity. If you liked the HBO Doom Patrol series, much of it comes from right here. It's my favorite Doom Patrol run, my favorite Grant Morrison run, and my highest ranked DC comic of all time. Long live the Doom Patrol. Hey everybody, thanks for listening. This has been the 15 best DC comics of all time. I'm Dave with Comic Book Herald. You can find all my stuff at comicbookherald.com. You can support the site at patreon.com slash comicbookherald. Or of course, like, subscribe, and share to the YouTube channel here. And that helps me out as well. Thanks for listening. Find links in the show notes to all this good stuff. And enjoy the comics.